Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Increase of fuel at the pumps and power plants. Also tonight, liberation festivities kick off tomorrow. And COVID numbers begin to increase once again. In sports, triathletes from around the Pacific experience Luta hospitality. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Challenge. June 17th through June 25th, the Northern Marianas will be hosting the NM Pacific Mini Games 2022. Athletics, badminton, baseball, beach volleyball, golf, tennis, triathlon, ba, and weightlifting. Visit northernmarianas2022.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks to the Tensu Lin Foundation, Joe Tendale Foundation, T Galleria, Docomo Pacific, ITNE, NMC, Elan Group, Marpack, Fish Guy Scuba Charter, Atkins Kroll, Glorified City Limit, McDonald's, Mobile, Triple J, NM Tech, and Bank of Guam. Sipping on a delicious drink from McDonald's may have you thinking, what makes these drinks just hit different? Don't overthink it. Just enjoy it. It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. Cool off this summer with McDonald's Minute Maid slushies. Try the new tropical mango or returning favorite strawberry watermelon for a limited time. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. To the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, June 29th, 2022. Topping tonight's newscast, a rise in fuel prices results in a fuel adjustment charge increase. The Commonwealth Utilities Corporation announces an increase to the fuel adjustment charge to be in effect this July 1st. Current FAC rate of 36 cents per kilowatt hour will increase to 43 cents. Deputy Executive Director Crichton Verge states when the fuel at the pump increases, CUC power plants receive the same effect. Fuel adjustment charge is an add-on to the base rate that CUC charges for electric service to our customers. The base rate is what covers the normal operation, the maintenance expenses of producing electricity and moving it to your home outside of the fuel that it takes to run the generator. So as we know, here in Saipan, Tinian, and Rota, all of the island's electricity is generated by diesel-powered engines. And those diesel engines, just like your car, take fuel. And that fuel rate changes. And the fuel adjustment charge is really just the pass-through that CUC receives uh, from the cost from mobile, where we purchase our fuel, to the customer. Consumers may see a 19% increase in their next utility bill. 
let's just say for an example, a, a family that uses 800 kilowatt hours a month in electricity. The increase in FAC that was recently announced will result in an increase of approximately $56 for that family for the month. Residents are encouraged to conserve energy as much as possible. So some of the things that a typical residential customer can do to save electricity is avoid using your dryer. Line dry your clothes instead. Conserve water, only run water uh, full loads of laundry so that you're sure to, uh, to minimize the amount of water you use, which also consumes electricity. Use cold water, turn down your hot water heater. Uh, even unplugging unused electronics can add to, uh, to reducing your electric consumption because there's small draws from each of those. So there's several things that the consumers can do to help reduce their electric usage. Probably the biggest here in CNMI is to reduce the thermostats or change your thermostat setting uh, to reduce your air conditioning uh, usage. CUC customers are also encouraged to visit the customer service staff for any alternate solutions to high cost bills. The 2022 Liberation Day festivities kicks off this week with the July 4th parade ready for Monday. Bye. The Saipan Mayor's Office announces the beginning of the CNMI Liberation Day celebration. Beginning tomorrow, June 30, festivities at the Garpan Fishing Base will be open to the public at 5 p.m. There will be over 60 booths that will have games for kids, food, and merchandise. Live entertainment will be provided as well. The event will run tomorrow until July 4th. And the parade preparations are already in place. So right now we have just a little over 40 participants. Um, we have 20 floats. This is the most um, floats that we have had participating. Um, this year our prizes for floats are first place $5,000, uh, second at $4,000, third at $3,000, uh, fourth at $2,000, fifth at one thousand, and then we even have a sixth place, five hundred dollars. So there is no entry fee this year. So we have a lot of floats. Thirteen floats will be competing for the grand prize, while the others are for the community's enjoyment. We have a few marching units, um, the usual community groups that come together, and then we also have Team NMI will be joining us for the parade. Those athletes that participated in um, the 2022 Northern Marianas Pacific Mini Games, so we're glad to have them. They brought home um, some medals, so we just want to celebrate their victory too. This year's liberation theme is honoring our legacy as we ride the waves of change. Saipan Mayor David Apatang. We'll never forget, uh, you know, our past, uh, our pressure during the war, World War II, and then we have all the uh, Chisupi and Kenmen and all that. And then the wave of change that we have been through, a lot of issues, you know, typhoons and then uh, pandemic and all that. And we're pretty much recovered from that. So. We're just riding the wave of those, and now we're back to pretty much uh, normal situations, and uh, we're moving forward. So. The mayor says there hasn't been a parade in two years due to the aftermath of Typhoon Yutu and the pandemic. His office continued to hold several events to commemorate Liberation Day, and this year, with No Mercy returning, it's a special event for the community. This year, I'm so happy that, uh, you know, we managed to to prepare for the liberation this year. Uh, actually, I wasn't sure we were going to do it because uh, we haven't had the green light yet from the task force. But uh, since everybody's doing, uh, you know, all these activities, we decided to go ahead and uh, do the liberation for our people this year. And I'm very happy that uh, we had organized the committee and uh, the participants uh, came out and uh, they want to be part of the celebration this year. I think our people are excited. Mayor Apatang invites the whole community to come out and enjoy the Liberation Day festivities, including the 30-minute fireworks show on July 4th. The parade will be held this July 4th at 10 a.m. on Beach Road from the National Office Supply to the Garpan Fishing Base. Festival grounds will open at 9 a.m. and the fireworks will be held at 9 p.m. Students looking for assistance in filling out scholarship forms will be able to attend workshops after the July 4th. 
the Northern Marianas College will be hosting workshops for students who may need assistance in completing the free application for federal financial aid, better known as FAFSA. NMC's fall semester deadline for FAFSA submissions is before August 1, and the event is open to new and ongoing students. These free workshops will be held at the NMC Library on July 6, 13, 20, 26, and 28. Participants can also have their scholarship documents and other paperwork photocopied for free. The application fee and placement test fee will also be waived as well for the participants. Students are encouraged to bring required documents such as valid IDs, their high school diploma, official transcripts, and tax return information from the past two years. For more information, you may contact the Financial Aid Office at fao at marianas.edu or 670-237-6791. The CNMI records its 35th COVID-related death while seeing an increase in positive cases. The Governor's COVID-19 Task Force, along with the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation, confirms the CNMI's 35th COVID-related fatality this week. There's also been an uptick in positive 19 cases since the mini-games. According to CHCC, 189 individuals have been confirmed positive for COVID through hospital-based testing, community-based testing, and travel. CHCC does believe there may be a few more positive cases in the community that weren't able to test through them. Residents who were tested positive through home kit testings are encouraged to report the results online, especially those who are high risk and may be eligible for COVID treatment. Those who may want to request for treatment should fill out the medical questionnaire online at www.staysafecnmi.com slash self-reporting to get assessed immediately. As of today, there are zero hospitalizations. The CNMI has moved into COVID-19 community level medium, which may mean entry requirements into the CNMI may change. Stay with KSPN2 News as we bring you the latest COVID updates. Students present creativity and pride in a contest. Stay tuned. have the right to a safe workplace. Employers must provide a workplace that is free from recognized hazards and comply with applicable OSHA standards, including proper reporting of injuries. Training needs to be done in a language and vocabulary employees can understand. And an OSHA information poster must be displayed prominently in the workplace. Workers, you have the right to raise a safety or health concern with your employer or OSHA without being retaliated against. And request an OSHA consultation of your workplace if you believe there are unsafe or unhealthy conditions. OSHA can help. Free assistance to identify and correct hazards is available to small and medium-sized employers without citation or penalty. So look out, speak up, and stay safe. Job safety and health, it's not only good practice, it's the law. Check out OSHA.gov or call 664-3154 
or 3155. If you are planning on drinking this 4th of July, make arrangements for a safe ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Villages in the Commonwealth now have their very own flag, designed and created by our very own students. Take a look. The Governor's Council of Economic Advisors unveiled the new Marianas Village flags to the community at the Taste of Marianas over the weekend. The flags are part of the Marianas Village Pride Project in collaboration with the Sinai Public School System and the Mayor's Office of Saipan, Tinian and Rota. So we really wanted to start a program where our kids would be involved in becoming really proud of where they come from, the villages that they represent. And so um, we put out this contest that we presented to the PSS um, PTA Summit last year and um, asked them to engage their students to create flags that um, has symbols for their villages, colors that represent it, or like iconic sites that they have. Jaseya received over 800 submissions from PSS students from all three islands who depicted an image of their residing village as best they could. The judging period was not easy. So they looked at how, um, of course, creativity um, and they had um, a little piece at the back uh, an essay that they wrote to explain why they chose this or like why did they choose this bird or why did they choose this color or why is this site there. So all of that was um, a part of the decision making. So all of our leaders knew what the students were talking about. And of course, our mayors who are most familiar of the villages that they um, govern, right, decided on, oh, yeah, this is great. Rhoda and Tinian now have three new village flags per island and Saipan with 29. According to Nasola, three villages did not get submissions because they are considered new. Because we've just got a couple or three villages that did not get any submissions because they're kind of new and a lot of like the students didn't really um, recognize them as their village yet. So we're really hoping that um, in this coming period where our um, villages will be delineated and the new boundaries are made, um, then we can restart another cycle of competition for those three new villages. For those who may be a bit curious, the newly identified villages are Asmaheta, near Vescor Village, Ilizang, which begins at the Marianas Eye Clinic up to Quartermaster Road, and Inoften, Ladder Beach area. Jaseya is currently in another planning phase in hopes to get new housing for the flags. So we're still planning on where we can permanently house these flags. So because we've got flags for Saipan, Tinian and Rhoda, and we want to make sure it's consistent with all of it. So um, we're still in the planning stage and we'll definitely let you guys know where they will be hosted in house forever. The flags are posted on the Jaseya Facebook and Instagram pages. Acting CNMI Governor Jude Hofschneider commends the Northern Marianas Pacific Minigames Committee for organizing the event. 
More than a thousand athletes and officials from 20 different countries were in the CNMI for the mini games. The NMI made sure visitors had housing, food, and transportation. Eight sporting events were held on Saipan, one on Rota, and Tinian hosted one match on their sands as well. Governor Torres and Lieutenant Governor Palacios are currently off island, which makes Senate President Jude Hofschneider the acting governor of the Commonwealth, who commends everyone involved in the games. Uh, you know, I've run into uh, uh, our visiting delegates, and they've got so much great things to say about, about the cinema hosting and the organization, and we have raised the bar higher. So, uh, yeah, so uh, kudos to uh, the, the leaders of, of the organizing committee, Mark Poe, CEO Ben, and, and all the partners, especially the donors, the sponsors, and, and the agencies that have participated to ensure the smooth transition and the logistics help, public safety, and of course our volunteers uh, for coming out strong. It's a first for the NMI to host an event this large, and Hofschneider says they are pleased with the outcome. It's amazing the magnitude of uh, the games and, and the athletes that are involved. And one thing that is uh, very pleasing is our athletes are actually hanging there, and and it's just a it's a great event for the people of the CNMI, for the CNMI, and also for the countries, our goodwill, country our partnership partner countries that have participated. So, yes, we are very pleased with that. Saturday's ceremony officially ended the Games, where the Pacific Games Council presented the next flag to the next host country. Palau will be hosting the Pacific Games in 2025. All right, folks, don't go anywhere because we have sports up next. <laughs> to take a friend or parent's medication. It came from a doctor, right? Using someone's prescription is really risky. Taking any drugs for which you have not been medically screened is not only dangerous, but taking an opioid that was not prescribed for you is also illegal. Never borrow and never share prescribed medication. Your life and your loved one's life could depend on it. Talk to your doctor about prescribed opioids. Never mix with alcohol and remember, never borrow, never share. It only takes a little to lose a lot. This project was supported by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Contents are solely the responsibility of CHCC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the CDC or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans.
Visiting athletes and officials experience the southern part of the Marianas. Hosting a triathlon is not new for the island of Rota, but hosting it for nine countries? Definitely very special and a memorable one. This is the first time for the Northern Mariana Islands to host the Pacific Mini Games and holding the triathlon event on Rota is something the people and athletes will cherish forever. From the time officials, athletes and volunteers arrived to this beautiful paradise until the day they left the island, Rota residents showed them their one-of-a-kind local hospitality, support and friendliness which the island is famous for. For you, uh, athletes, volunteers, coaches, all of the uh, people that made this uh, event possible, I wanted to thank the local staffs here on the island and also to all the people that made this once again possible. Welcome to the island of Rora. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the wonderful event. Welcome to Rome. Thank you for coming. I wanted to extend um, a, a deep appreciation for bringing the game to Rota because in the past we um, we we always had the games in Saipan and whatnot. But Here are some unforgettable clips in Rota before, during, and after the sports event. Pacific Mini Games, Triathlon Federation officials and athletes from the nine different countries are very grateful to the mayor of Rota and to the entire people of the world's friendliest island for hosting the triathlon during the 2022 Pacific Mini Games. number one from the island of Guam, Manami Ijima. From New Caledonia, Manon Brasera. From Tahiti, Puameyama Kevinino. From the cinema, Kathy Lelaine Jill Pagabla Rosala. From Fiji, Tiraima Pagabe.
Hey golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online, open seven days a week. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym, and today we're gonna go over the kettlebell deadlift. Fantastic exercise to build overall strength, particularly in the legs and hips. Remember, we want to make sure that our setup is in good position. If you, if, you, if you set up in a bad position, it's not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common setup, error setup is a, obviously a rounded upper back. Two simple ways of correcting that. All I'm going to have Vince do here is extend his arms up here and all he's going to do is think about reaching long and pushing his hips back. Reach long and push your hips back. So as you can see, he's already in good position. Now he, all he's going to do is grab that kettlebell. He's got tension in his legs and in his back. All he's going to do is just stand up tall, finish with his glutes. And for the KS Pan weather report, Partly sunny with isolated showers. East southeast wind 3 to 7 miles per hour tonight. Mostly cloudy with isolated showers. East southeast wind winds around 7 miles per hour. High 88, low 79, and 85 percent humidity. For tomorrow, partly sunny with isolated showers. East southeast wind 7 to 10 miles per hour. High 88, low 79. The marine forecast: light to gentle winds and combined seas of 3 to 5 feet will continue through Thursday. Southeast wind 5 miles, 5 knots. Wind waves two feet or less, east swell three to four feet. The sunrise will be at 5.49 a.m. High tide at 9.38 p.m., low tide 2.15 p.m. And the sunset, you can catch that at 6.51 p.m. All right, folks, there you have it. That is your midweek edition of the new sports and weather here in the Marianas. We thank you so much for watching the Channel 2 News. We hope you have a good night, and we'll see you back here on Friday.